Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Has something like this ever, ever happened to you? Like, for instance, uh, you have your favorite team, or maybe you train someone, you're a coach, and you see your team, or you see, you know, people in your team, and you see the, you know, the opposition, the people that you're going to fight against, going to play against, and you look at them and say, these guys are better than us. These guys are having a more disciplined uh, training method. They work harder. They have a better method versus us. And I'm on this team. So did you ever, uh, have you ever had this kind of feeling that why are we not training better? Why are we not planning better? These guys are not geniuses. They're just, you know, thinking more. Or I don't know, it's something else they have that we don't. At least we can copy. Uh, it happened to me a few times in uh, in my life, and it happens to me right now with this Ukraine, uh, NATO, Western countries versus the rest, which is Russia and the rest. It seems like this is my point. It seems like the rest of the world rallies behind the other team and not our team. And I'm looking like the uh, looking at the guys in charge of our team, and it seems like they make mistake according to us. Why I call it a mistake? I call it a mistake because it will hurt me. I don't know if it hurts them. I don't know if it hurts the real guys. But it hurts me. So my team makes mistakes. And it seems like it's going to lose. And it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to really, you know, uh, be in a competition with the other side. You can cooperate. But it seems like those guys over there, in charge of us, they make decisions that we are going to be negatively affected by the consequences will be bad and i don't like that i don't like that and i don't like when i look at my enemy and say hmm that's a good look at this guy that's a good thing they're doing over there that was smart but everything they do is against us it harms us and i'm looking at our team like for instance biden kamala harris kirby which is just a spokesperson but anyway blinken um What's his name? All these guys in the government that I know by their, you know, the fact that they are public figures. And I'm looking at these guys, and I'm looking at the other guys. And I'm thinking, I can look at Scholz, which is not one of mine, but still. I can look at Anna, Annabella, whatever his name, her name is, the foreign minister of Germany, an infantile foreign minister. Unfortunately, she's not ready. I looked at, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Truss, Liz, Lazy Lizard Truss. She was not ready. I looked at uh, Ben Johnson, whatever Ben Johnson, yeah, the athlete. Uh, Boris Johnson, not Boris Becker, though. Uh, again, and I looked at Sunak. I look at Macron. Macron is sneaky. Macron is the best from the West. The West is the best. Get here, we're going to do the rest. You remember Jim Morrison, uh, the song uh, The Doors, to be more uh, precise. The Doors, uh, this is the end. The word, uh, the word, the uh, song, the end. Yeah, the, the West is the best. Well, I don't know. The best in the West is Macron. However, he is a weasel, but he's the smartest. I gotta tell you that. Uh, Maloney, uh, she's a, uh, how do you call it, a novice. She's a novice, narrow, sorry. That's the way she is. No balls whatsoever. You know, and then you got the other two, Salvini and uh, Berlusconi. Berlusconi is barely alive and Salvini is... Something like that. So what's going on here? We have the adversaries getting traction in their club. Saudi Arabia jumped on their ship. Is that a good thing for us? Obviously not. What did we do to get them back? Only mistake after mistake. Now, what's going on? I'm going to show you this article coming from Reuters. Saudi Arabia seeks cooperation with China and quote-unquote ignores Western worries. Why? Because we have no offers. We kick them in the balls and they say, you know what? That's enough. Enough is enough. And they go to China. They're going to do business with China. If we would offer them better opportunity to do business, they will come and do business with us. But no, we're interested in global warming and uh, the color of our hair and whatever who the hell we in the butt and whatever we do. I don't care about that. That's unimportant. This is important. What's going on here? So, let's see what's going on here. 
Saudi Arabia wants to collaborate, not compete with China. What's wrong with that? I think it's just a free market. The kingdom's energy minister declared on Sunday saying he ignored Western suspicions over their growing ties. They, they say it out loud. That tells you that the empire's power is crumbling. They're not afraid. And that is because Russia is not kneeled. That's why these guys are courageous now. Because Russia is not destroyed yet. If Russia would collapse tomorrow, I guarantee you Saudi Arabia will not make those claims. I guarantee you that. Why? Because the next one will be China. And if Russia collapsed, China will collapse. Not that China is weaker, but what, are you, what do you have at, that the other ones don't have? You have a bigger economy, but you have, I, I would say, worse military. I would say, but you know best. So, we'll see. Let's see what's going on here in this article. As the world's top oil exporter, Saudi Arabia's bilateral relationship with the world's biggest energy consumer is anchored by hydrocarbon ties. So, it's not by solar and wind energy. Hydro hydrocarbon ties, my friends. But cooperation between Riyadh and Beijing. So, who made this mistake that pushes these guys into uh, China's cooperation with Saudi Arabia? Our guys did that. Our Paris Accords and all that BS. By cooperating, uh, but cooperation between Riyadh and Beijing has also deepened insecurity and sensitive tech, tech amid a warming of political ties to the concern of the US. And what is US doing? Doing everything it needs to make mistakes. I remember it was, I think it was, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, I'm 99.9% .9 certain he said, the, the, pres the president, the, the prime minister of Israel, before, not now, before, when he was a prime minister before, I think he said about the Palestinians, um, I think he was and talking about uh, when he was uh, Yasser Arafat and, you know, all those guys over there, the Palestinian Authority and this, he said, but it was after, or it was uh, Ariel Sharon, maybe it was Ariel Sharon, doesn't matter, a Jewish or Israeli uh, Prime Minister. He said, the Palestinians never missed an opportunity to miss an opportunity. So that means they never missed an opportunity to fuck up. So basically, this is what's going on right now, in my view, with the United States of America. They don't miss an opportunity to even fuck up more than they already did. They sent Blinken over there. A few days ago, they spoke with uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman. Nothing changed. Mohammed bin Salman told Blinken, hey, Blinky, start blinking. Okay, listen to me. We want nuclear energy for peaceful purposes. We're going to build some uh, nuclear power plants here. That's, a, that, that's what's going to happen. Now we talk to you. Talk to you first. So, you know, you don't get too uh, upset and start crying like a female dog in your safe space. All right? Retreat over there. <laughs> Okay, we tell you first, hey, you help us build a nuclear energy, you know, a peaceful nuclear weapon. No, we can't. <laughs> nuclear uh, reactors. <laughs> yeah, I think that's next. And the Americans said, okay. And then uh, um, uh, Mohammed bin Salman told the blinky guy, but you're not the only option. We have other g offers. So if you think you're tough, we just discard you like, like this and we go and get the other ones, which are? Maybe the Canadians? <laughs> Do you think so? Or maybe the Russians? And they will build for us. And then you, what are you going to say? Hey, you can't do that, Erdogan. You can't buy S-400s from Russia. Well, you didn't want to give us the Patriots. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? Uh, wait until we tell you. Uh, you know what? Off. So basically, this is what's going on. So Blinky sucked another uh, bonbon, if you know what I mean. So this is what's going on. The United States seems to make, I don't want to call them diplomatic mistakes because these guys are not engaged in the, the diplomacy. They are engaged in threats, blackmail, regime change, and freedom and democracy bringing with bombs. You like it or not, we're going to bring it because we know best what you need. So uh, like that, countries already saw uh, this movie a few times in uh, certain countries, <coughs> if you know what I mean. The list is long, in the past 30 years, just to mention them. 
So they say, no, 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 we don't believe you. You got to come over Red Rover and really, really uh, bend over and allow us to do a little bit of a work on you. And then when you build trust until then, no, my pants are up and there, it's a knot over there. You can't untie it. So here it's uh, what's going on here. And as I said, these guys are on my team, supposedly, but I don't think they're on my team. I think they're on a team that is outside of our interest. But they try to keep us together, united. But we are dumb. We are dumb and we are dumbed down. And the mass media does a very good job in redirecting our focus among us, hating one another, groups and people. And they do the hanky-panky over there. They count the money and they have the power. And we deal, he's this, oh, he's this, oh, I don't like you this, I don't like you that. Very easy, very easy. But what do you expect? When this society here thinks that an educated society and votes for, let's say, President Obama, former, twice, and Trump, and uh, Biden, oh my God, and Kamala Harris, uh, how can you call this country or this, not country, this electorate, part of it, part of it, educated? Remember, one third of the United States of America uh, adult population has a college degree. College degree used to be something that maybe, I don't know, 6% of the population were able to achieve. Now, we all can do it. I don't believe it. Because you drop the, you drop the standards and you got these people. And they say, hey, I have a college degree. I'm educated. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's talk about it. It's more important to find out how a person processes information than the information he's got. You, because you can have all the information available if you don't put it logically and you know chronologically in your brain you analyze it in the wrong way you're going to reach the wrong conclusion that's a reality so open your mouth so i know who you are I, I you can tell me i'm a phd and i'm a nobel laureate in physics okay let's talk about let's say uh chess you're not an expert in chess are you the same a guy who's a grandmaster in chess he's not an expert in chemistry unless you read a lot but not even that doesn't prove. Talk like a fish because fish talk, talks. Uh, yeah, talk to me. As I talk, you can understand my, uh, my way of thinking as erroneous as it might be to you, you know, but at least you know, you know where I'm coming from. And I don't pretend to be an expert on everything. I'm, I'm telling you what, what I know, how I think about it, the evidence I'm provided, and I'm giving it to you. Now, obviously, obviously, there's more things to learn all the time, but it doesn't mean I'm going to shut up, up because I don't know everything, uh, you know, everything right now. No, you will never know everything. So what? That means we should all shut up. So sh who should be the ones that are allowed to talk? And why? Do you think a PhD in something, uh, he read what? He was supposed to read about 60 books. That's what he was supposed to, to, to read for his thesis. For a PhD in the United States of America, 62 to be more precise, where I come from, all right? 62. Now, if you, if you read 64, you read more than a PhD guy. But, hey, he read the... Uh, I'm not going to go into that. It's too late, too much anyway. So, my point here, my friends, is the, uh, our team is losing and is not missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. The Arabs and the uh, Chinese get together with the Russians and we're going to remain with our vassal states about 35 or 40 on this planet and the rest up to 193 you you just subscribe subscribe sus, sus, subscribe sub, take away <laughs> I can't say uh, you take away the 40 countries and you remain where 153 so 153 countries have open mind and a decision to join which club thank you very much for uh, which club they want to join good job thank you very much for being with me again today uh, stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just